Hi, I'm Itu, and lately I've been using a lot of Unity Shader Graph for my upcoming game, Sound Horizons. The latest thing I've built with it is a shader for generating these procedural locally mountains. It wasn't as easy as I would imagine. That's why I wrote a complete tutorial of how I did it. If you want to create such landscape with shader, you can read my article in the description. It describes the process step by step. But for this video, I want to keep it short and share with you four lessons that I've learned about Unity Shader Graph, which are essentials for locally terrain. Number one, how to get locally normal. If you write a vertex shader that moves the vertex based on the noise, you might be surprised to obtain a terrain with smooth surface. If you aim for a locally art style, this isn't what you want. Instead, you want to model faces to remain visible. Here is a magic trick that fixes it. Using DDX and DDY, we can calculate the slopes of each faces, and by crossing these two, we obtain a straight normal. Plugging this into the normal map of the fragment shaders makes the faces flat and visible again. Number two, remap your noises. As Bob Ross taught us, everybody needs a friend. And this also applies in shader. A single panel of noise is sad. To obtain an interesting texture, it's better to combine several kinds of noises. For this, you just have to add them. But if you just do that, you might get some troubles balancing them. Since they all pile up one on top of another, each time you increase or reduce one, it also affects the height of your terrain. To fix it, you need to use a remap. This takes your texture, along with its minimum and maximum values, and scale it so that it fits between 0 and 1. The input min and max are easy. Min is 0 and max is just the sum of all your noises and density. With this, you can safely adjust the strength of each noise while still keeping a constant terrain height. Number 3. You can't color faces with shader only. Shader is definitely what you'll eventually be using for coloring your terrain, but if you just use the terrain noise with a color gradient, you end up with smooth gradient on the final texture. And that doesn't really fit with the Lopoli art style. We want each face to have one single color. But as I said, you can't do that in a fragment shader alone. And trust me, I tried. I looked if we could obtain the face position from the vertex ID, or if we could use the normal in some clever way, but just no, you really can't. Or at least, if you know a solution, please share it in the comments. So how did I manage to do it anyway? The information that we lack in the shader is the face coordinates. But this is something that we can get from a C-sharp script and pass to the shader using the vertex color. So I wrote a script that calculates for each face its central position and write it as a color on its vertices. This produces this custom UV that is similar to a UV you would have in a shader, except that each face uses a single position. Then in my shader, I read the vertex color instead of UV, so that the colors end up aligned with the faces. And with this method, we finally have a terrain that looks low-poly. And number 4, occlusion calling is computed before vertex displacement. When I started scrolling through the infinite terrain, I faced this very annoying bug where chunks would disappear too early. They were still present in the editor though, but in the camera view, they turned invisible. This drove me mad. To solve it, I had to dive into the rabbit hole of occlusion culling. Occlusion culling is the optimization method Unity uses for optimizing rendering. Basically, whenever a model gets outside of the camera frame, or hidden behind something, Unity stops rendering it. But my terrain is clearly still in the frame here. Why doesn't it render? Well, that's simply because Unity computes the mesh bounds before applying the vertex shader. If the plane was still flat, it would indeed be out of frame. And so, Unity eliminates it. To fix it, you don't need to disable occlusion culling. You can rewrite the mesh bound by script once again. No need to stick to the actual terrain shape, just make it a large box that has the width and length of your plane and is high enough so that it contains the mountains. These bounds are invisible, but Unity detects them as inside the camera's frame and so keeps the mesh visible. With these tricks, you should have the tools to create your own locally landscapes. Once again, if you're interested in the complete process, you can read my tutorial in the description. But above all, I recommend you to try and experiment various things with shaders. Who knows, maybe it will break in an interesting way. I hope this video was useful to you. Feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed it. I'm still making a game that uses a lot of shader, and I'm intending to share everything I learned along the way. Until then, thanks for watching, and happy shadering.